right, guys, it is time for Ring Rust Retro. We got an amazing theme song, so without further ado, please hit it. I dedicate this to the throwbacks. Like seen a shirt in 06, ECW, one night stand, I won't hold back. Like take the remedies to battle in the backlash. 07 to one man stands, we'll bring it back to the days of Lord Alfred Hayes. All in Nash and Jade, Hollywood drops a leg. They say the days of old are the best though. That's why we bring to you Ring Rust Retro. Let's go. Oh, that theme song is so good. It, we do not deserve a theme song that good. Our buddy EZB hooking us up with fantastic theme songs, or one fantastic theme song. I was I was about to lump mine in with that, be like, yeah, he did those too. He did those fantastic jams like Smart Say and Dirt Sheet Busters, but no, he didn't. Uh, I will not tarnish his good name. But this week on Ring Rust Retro, we are doing ECW, Barely Legal, 1997. Yeah, boy. Uh, I did not go to this event. Uh, we'll talk about all that in a minute. Uh, but my, BG, let's say that I want the boys of Ring Rust Radio to cover my favorite pay-per-view of all time, Starcade 2000. How can I have the, you guys do that? How do I do that? You know what? I'm not going to give info if that's the pay-per-view. Didn't we already do it? I thought we did Starcade 2000 already. That's why I used it. I don't know. Is that the Starcade we did, Mike? We, we definitely did some Starcade that was horrible. Okay. Thank you. I try to forget <laughs> as soon as it gets done with when we do so WCW. You said, you, you said you fell asleep anyway, so I have no doubt you just don't, didn't watch it. I watched it. <laughs> You're so jaded. But how- yeah, patreon.com slash ringrustradio. Go there, donate to the tier uh, for Ring Rust Retro. We also have other tiers available. Match commentary, Mark Man is coming up, fantasy. You have so much to offer. So you're right, and we're match commentaries. You said we're doing Brett versus Owen. There's so many things that you can get involved with if you love Ring Rust Radio. If you have listened for years and years and years, how you want to pay the show back a little bit and get something for it? It's easy. Patreon.com/slash Ring Rust Radio. Once we found this website, this has been so such a godsend for our show because fans love getting emails. And they people are like, you never read my email. Well, you want your goddamn email read? You go to Patreon.com/slash Ring Rust Radio. You guarantee one of your emails is read each month. And there you go. No more complaining. No more worrying about it. We handle your shit. You guys excited? Oh, I yeah. Guess someone handles my shit. Mm-hmm. Like a doctor? It, I'd rather not do it myself. Yeah, yeah. for yeah, for, honestly, <laughs> if that's the alternative, thank you for handling my shit. Just right into the brown box. Right into the brown box. Mm-hmm. Bow, There it bow. is. It's the brown yeah. in the in box. The box. Yeah. 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 <laughs> this is yeah. like a long. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was a brown box special, Mikey. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this show sucks. Chris Jericho. <laughs> <laughs> it really does. Uh, I've been saying that for years. Though. We've been fooling fans for so. You thought this was a respectable show? I don't think they're our fooling. guests have. I think they know. Our guests are like, "Hey, it is a respectable show." Yeah, and I was supposed to be real professional. Wonder what the rest of the show is like. Yeah, it must be just like that. <laughs> yeah, right. Nope. <laughs> nope. If you just like smeared poop on a wall, that's kind of like ring rust. Guys, that ring is- rust retro ECW barely legal ninety seven. You can find it on the WWE Network or on a VHS tape. I have still, um, but probably the WWE Network. Uh, so I called my uncle and I asked why we didn't go to this event. It took place in Philadelphia. First ever pay per view nineteen ninety seven. I was ten. I had gone to events before this. Two events before this and a bunch after this. Just get your uncle on the show. He, he is a cocaine addict and he's okay, currently so. living with my cousin who and he's kind of a garbage water human being, so is I really this, don't want to listen to the show. Is, no. Is, no. Well you know yeah, how he's I an like, asshole. Uh, yeah. That it's like a gimmick. Coke what? addict. So. Well no. Here's the gimmick. He never eyes. lived he lived with my grandparents till they died in their eighties and then he's been like living off the system ever since. Kind of a garbage water person. Looking back, he was not so bad for during er, whatever. I don't know why we're talking about this part of my life. You're just really getting down on me. Uh, holy shit! So he said this, the event was sold out. That's why we didn't go. But I went to more TV tapings than pay per views uh, because he didn't feel comfortable taking me to the pay per views because they got really really rowdy. Oh, because you're a bitch. Um, I was also <laughs> s- uh, nine and ten years bitch. old at the time. Bitch. As a ten year old, I'm sure I was a bitch. bitch. Uh, glad to see he could make that distinction between TV tapings and pay-per-views being rowdy because <laughs> no one else. Could. I remember seeing some rowdy ass shit and like boobs and all kinds of crazy things, 
and he's like, oh no, it's cool here, but pay per views all getting too crazy. Um, so yeah, it's easy for him to throw stones as a cocaine addict. Um, but yeah, so that's that's why I didn't go. For those wondering, were you there? No, I wasn't here. No, nothing. Cool. Great, good, cool, good, st- cool story, man. It's awesome story, man. Uh, this <laughs> is where Garbage Water, Mike Chiari, and Brandon Gavin shit on Joey Styles. So let me educate mm-hmm. the fans I- to nip this in the bud. The man is the only commentator in wrestling history to call a live pay-per-view event solo. That's factual. You can check it. That doesn't plus, mean he's good. It plus, he he else. Sh- well, plus, he was one of the key driving forces behind the success of the company from its inception when uh, Paul Heyman got involved in 1993 <sighs> until 2001. He was voted the best commentator by Davey M. for three straight okay, years. so you just destroyed his credibility. But didn't win good in 97. Job. Can you name me who did win in 97, though? Uh, it's somebody, probably fucking Shivani or some bullshit. Okay, well, you guys, you uh, while I look this up again, because I For didn't write... For a Japanese guy. You forgot. I didn't write the answer down. I didn't. <laughs> Nick. Uh, but oh, yeah, I wrote here, pay-per-view opens with Joey Styles. Yikes. Easily one of the worst ways to open the show. No. I wrote, what's going on with Joey Styles' mic? Is he me? Yeah, audio fucking blows. Oh, started. my God. <laughs> well, I wrote about that, too. Here, let me see. ECW production in 97 equals ROH production in 2016. It's true. So, what, it's, that was good analysis. Uh, oh, oh, Mike Chiari, this is why I wrote that note. In 1997, the Melts, Davy M, voted Mike Tanay from World <laughs> Championship Wrestling as your best announcer of the year. He would. You want to know why? Because he called a Japanese show. Because he, because they called him in when matches they kicked Dusty off commentary when uh, Psychosis would wrestle or Conan would wrestle. <laughs> yeah. Or they call him. He was like the, the fucking professor. He was the professor. professor. <laughs> he was the professor. <laughs> and now he's Professor Vegas. That's his podcast. He does gambling podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> that, is that real? Yes. Yeah, Get him on the show then. I would. I've tried. I don't. And we're only going to call him Professor Vegas. <laughs> he's big time in us. Uh, Professor Vegas is big time in us. <laughs> Listen, there's been there's been some conflict. Hell, we do time. gambling shit all the time. Well, like, like a w- couple so, times a year. Yeah, at least for <laughs> yeah. WrestleMania, at the very least. Uh, anything before we start getting into people getting in the ring? Uh, oh no. Okay, why Bischoff does... takes it up the ass sign yeah, right oh, off yeah. the bat. Yep. Yikes to that! Oh, well, was it? It was A and then dollar signs for the S's. So right. it was a little bit edited, but not yeah. very much. No. And that will be the only thing edited all night. Uh, yeah. why- I also agree with Devon, by the way. Why this specific hate for De- uh, Devin, though? Yeah, he's so over, Devin. Yeah, Devin. He Devin's was. Over. They were just. He, they were chanting only at him. <laughs> yeah. Sign guys out there. Bubba's out I there. I think I know. Uh, I, know I think Turner. I know too. Yeah, Philly's probably racist. Yeah. Inbred pieces of garbage. Uh, Devon hit the nail on the head. Uh, mm-hmm. No offense to anybody from Philly besides Donald Wood, but yeah. All right, let's let's talk about the opening video package. Uh, the random placement was one thing. Like, yeah. why do we get oh, no why way. do we get the Dudleys first, then the opening video package? Uh, whatever, I'm not even gonna complain. But the video package video packages make sense the whole show at all. Yeah, but the the placement, no. But the the vi- this was great moment. I love the old ECW video package. It was always hardcore, heavy music. It was always crazy fucking spots. It was all great things that had happened in ECW. I love the video packages in ECW. So that was never a complaint. They're just random cuts of cool stuff. That's about it. Yeah, that's what well, was an opening montage for the show. It's like. You get that for, for, for yeah, exa- exactly. Exactly. Do it. Welcome to fucking pay per view. We're Has ECW. Deal with this. Uh, first match of the night: the Eliminators defeated the Dudley Boys. Uh, I love <laughs> Joel, the man who is so big he can't help from hurting her. Gertner. Uh, yes, Joel Gertner is awesome. That's right. Really? Uh, I kind of I like Joel Gertner. I've I've always loved Joel Gertner. Yeah. He is hilarious with these things. If, and here's a little known fact: like he him. was the original ring announcer for ECW, and eventually he just got he had all these funny lines that he was a straight laced guy for a long time, uh, but eventually he he went with the Dudleys and then turned into this character, which is fantastic. Few things: uh, the camera angle. Why is it like this? What's your question? I don't understand. It's, it's so far away from the ring. Like, so far. Okay, okay, so let me explain to you how ECW's arena is laid out. There is a weird second floor stoop thing where, um, that you'll see it in the main event where, where Tommy Dreamer and stuff is when they're yeah, doing I know, the commentary. I know all about that. That's where the camera is up there. Yeah, well, it shouldn't be. 
The, the other, what was the alternative, dude? There was no other place. I don't to know, put anywhere it. else. No, anywhere there, else. there was no other place. There's your answer. So far, this right. was a Mickey Mouse uh, organization that was held together with bubblegum and fucking duct tape, but it still managed to be amazing. It's the cage. And it, but it, but for, honestly, this was the only place they could put the camera. It was just what it was, dude. It was a it was a, it was a warehouse in fucking South Philly. They had no other choice. So shut the fuck up. Next uh, comment. Right. Yeah, Louis Donnie's Styles a poor man's so sign guy, Dudley. That's mm. real. I, mm. I can't believe I, sign guy Dudley, got total eliminated is what I wrote. I know, later. I said BG and I should do that to you, actually. Yeah, yeah. you won't. You're fucking destroyed. Won't do shit. Um, Louis Styles blows. Yeah, you're going to say that and it's going to be wrong still. Um, I love the eliminators. They were really good in the ring, but not so much on the mic. So, Has there a draft where Donnie didn't get the eliminators? That was a question I posed. Uh, I, again, I love the Eliminators. Nothing wrong. They're fucking awesome. First off, Cronus gets no credit at all, but for a big dude, he was fucking athletic as shit. And I've know. always liked Perry Saturn, so. Why was this, a, like, a total squash match, essentially? Yeah. Like, that was like stupid. Shit. That I got, yeah. did anything. It was a horrible way to book your top team. And it was a six-minute match to start a pay-per-view for title change. Fucking bad booking. Uh, I like the title change. I like what um, the idea of uh, the Eliminators winning the titles in the opening match of the first pay-per-view ever. Didn't like the booking of the match itself. The Dudley Boys were your hottest heels in the company for like a year leading into this. And you just kind of squandered. You let them talk and that was great and everything. But like you said, it was kind of a glorified squash match for the Eliminators. And you could have made this a lot longer, a lot more. In- there-, there were things later that went too long and this didn't get enough time. And I just, I didn't like it. Yeah. The, the match itself was just, it was what it was, but I like the, t- I like the title change to start off the first pay-per-view ever. Sure, I'll with that. Just oh my god, for <laughs> Joey Styles. Um, and Cronus is a slightly thinner Chris Hero, is what I wrote. Think about it. Um, Paul Heyman, I- <laughs> what, what, you don't like that? It's kind of true. Uh, doesn't matter. I, I just want to say. It does matter. That, I mean, it doesn't matter. I fucking said it out of my mouth. That means it matters. You don't matter. I couldn't, I couldn't stop looking at that Kerry Collins Panthers jersey the entire time, because I had one. Ew. Yeah. Ew, you should be ashamed of yourself. Never admit well, that. It was a cool jersey. Mm. It, no, it wasn't, dude. Oh, yeah, was this Collins. is dumb as shit, dude. I don't want to... It's this, not dumb as shit. It, th- th- yes, it is. You can listen. It's dumb as shit. You may not... Says the it guy is. who bought fucking 100 Kevin Cobb jerseys. Okay, that was for a whole different purpose, though. Okay, I've, yeah. I've never worn a Kevin Cobb jersey in my entire life. It was for the purpose of sending it to us and making us miserable. Exactly, dude. It was a perfect gag gift. Or oh, don't even... Um, and dude. it's also fucking humongous, dude. Yeah. I had to get him in a bunch of different sizes. I'm just like saying. a blanket. Just saying, <laughs> I was very fat. Um, Still are. So uh, Paul Heyman said, "Build to your strengths and hide your weaknesses." And Exhibit A is Sandman and this video package because Sandman was I as a, a young guy. I've seen, I saw him wrestle. And you see video now of him as a younger person wrestling. And he was okay as a technical wrestler. Wasn't great. Wasn't the worst. But you, they just, he's like, oh, you're a drunk? Smoke cigarettes? And like, that's, uh, you know, that's going to work for me. And they just, they played to his strength. So it goes back to Paul Heyman, always talking about building your strengths and hiding your weaknesses. And ECW is a great example of that uh, philosophy. Thoughts on and the then he goes and puts Chris Candido in the ring for oh a fucking God. promo. Why? Yeah, why? I, I've never wanted to see Chris Candido wrestle more because it means I wouldn't have had to hear him speak. Well, I'll tell you. But thank you, God you we know had why? to watch him wrestle. Well, you want to know why? Sonny. Uh, Rob Van... That's probably why Sonny let the click plow through her so she didn't have to listen to him. Rob Van Dam... Wow, dude. <laughs> killed the guy. <laughs> Am I wrong? No. I mean, you're not wrong at all. No. Right. She did let the okay. fucking click plow it. And she, I, how many times do you think she farted with Sean? <laughs> all the time. Uh, poor Candido. Rest in peace. Uh, poor Lance Storm with that hair. Rest in peace, his hair. Rat tail. And no, it's blonde. It was a blonde it's... dyed rat tail. But a rat tail is just traditionally just a little bit of hair at like, the bottom oh part. He just like God. didn't shave the bo- the bottom that half of that back part of his head, dude. Like the long mullet part is all he had. But and in a yeah. ponytail. His hair is still better than yours. Yeah, that's what yeah. you say, but it's not even close to true because that could be the worst hair I've ever seen in my entire life. And I, with Storm looking back, it's like, oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, Why man. would you walk around like that? Let me Congrats. be serious for a minute. This hair looks good. Um, RVD <laughs> was goat as a heel and as a face. Deal with it, Mike Chiari. You fucking don't give him enough respect. What are you talking about? I like RVD. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. You like RVD or you love RVD? 
Love? Uh, I mean, there's not that many wrestlers I love. He should be one of them. Mm-hmm. Okay. One of the greatest wrestlers of all time. He's extremely and underrated. In the never said and a bad word life. about RVD. So well, sounds like you're saying it right now. Yeah, kind of. Thanks, dude. Appreciate. Sure that. doesn't. Sure does. But yeah, he's he's if the you best. You don't thing. love RVD. You're kind of an asshole. You're kind of an asshole. Agreed wholeheartedly. But best thing <laughs> that ever came out of uh, ECW was RVD, mm-hmm. and one of you my favorite do. wrestlers in general, ever. RVD. Yeah. Yes. He was awesome. Cool. Friend of the show. Uh, Friend of the show. Uh, the best part Two of this times. match was RVD just like beating up Bill Apter. Was that Bill Apter or some other guy? Yeah, it was Bill Apter. I couldn't he, like, tell, but I thought the same thing. Here. I didn't write it down because I couldn't tell because he wasn't there for long enough, but he literally just threw him out of the way. He's like, I'm doing moves, <laughs> move it. <laughs> Bill Apter looked the same then as he does now. Okay, like so here's the deal. <laughs> since I did, since that we're confirming that's Bill Apter, or at least that's what your thought is, I watched a pay-per-view from the mid-'80s, I'd say 86 or so, from uh, NWA with Bill Apter at ringside. He looked the same then as he did here <laughs> as he does now. I saw him at an Extreme Rising him. show or something like that, or one of those small indie shows that I was attending, and I actually got to s- speak to him in, in, for a couple minutes, and... Well, he looks the fucking same. He's, he just doesn't age. Love me some. Billy. Well, he aged at some point, like a lot. Yeah, but like then when he was, he was like twenty three years old. He got gray hair and <laughs> all that stuff happened, and then he's uh, like, ah, I'm fine. I'm just gonna stick here for a while. So at one point in this match, the crowd shits on Lance Storm for trying to protect RVD from unprotected yep. chair shots. Yep, that's one of the worst uh, offenses by the Philly crowd. There's a lot of them, but that's among them. Okay, first things first. Give me CTE! Okay, first things first. Mike, you come from a shit dick Buffalo town. I'm not going to defend this. They were fucking absolutely ruthless. Um, but BG, as someone who grew up watching wrestling in the 90s and in New York City, fans were notoriously ruthless for shit like this. If you're going to do chair shots that are just like commonplace in this kind of setting... Yeah. Uh, you got. You better. You better nail him. You better nail him. Don't bring the chair unless you're gonna hit him in the fucking head hard. Now looking back, of course, you know. yeah, CT. Don't fucking hit him in the head at all. But <laughs> right. in this spot, and as, as a person who watched it young, you're like, dude, that was a weak ass chair shot. Do it right or don't fucking do it. Even though they're hypocrites, because in the main event, um, well, the three way dance, Terry Funk does the same thing, and they don't get on him for yeah, it. Yeah, but he kind of threw the chair more. Mm mm. I Before like, he does, no, there was two shots he did, and then he threw the chair. He's like, "Fuck it." Yeah, because he knew people <laughs> yeah, he like knew not wasn't having going that well. He's like, "All right, racist yeah. against Canadians is what it is." Eh, I'll allow. Right. I'll allow that. Um, or people with really shitty hair. Yeah, that's yeah. true too. Uh, well, there you, was so many of them in the crowd anyway, so that doesn't make sense. You fucked up. Well, it was a time, different time. You fucked up. Chance oldest pay per view with that chant I've seen. Hmm. So that that's, makes sense. Well, because why else would you have seen it? Like they're they're not going to chant that in fucking like NWA or WCW. No, but I'm in '95 right now and I haven't seen it yet. I'm mean, I'm actually I know in, I know that's what I mean. Like they're not going to chant that in, like any of those pay per views. Uh, I don't know it's if a, it's Philly if it's Philly in the same time period, but it's WCW or WWF. I expected to see it in WWF or WCW before this, but yeah. honestly, I haven't seen it yet. At least on pay per view. So the ECW original. Amazing. We are so cool. Uh, okay, match, but RVD was like a college professor with a kindergarten student out there. No offense, Lance. Well, he almost killed himself one time with like a springboard elbow thing. That's where he fucked up, and that's why they chanted at him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. He really didn't almost uh, kill himself. But he didn't really, I, like, I mean, he, still, he, he was fine. And he still hit him with it. He still managed yeah. to just like just fly off and good. hit him. Yeah. And they yelled, you fucked up at him. Oldest chant ever or whatever. I, I like how chairs were perfectly legal in this match, but you better you better break for the ropes, all right? Yeah, like, you know, I've noticed that a lot. <laughs> I just watched Survivor Series for the next thing, and it's Elimination Chamber, and there's rope breaks in that. Like, why? I'm, hey, I don't remember that, really. Yeah, there are. So, That's stupid. So, But I, I noticed that a ton. <laughs> that rope breaks are still fucking enforced in hardcore matches. It, just, it is what it is. Like, it makes sense for a in, pinfall, in but some. not for... Uh, submission. Well, how, okay, how does it make sense for one and not the makes, other? Yeah, I don't think it makes sense for. Both. You can't fucking pick a. Tr- it's either works for both or works for neither. Pinfall because if you're on, the, if your foot's on the rope, then you're out of the ring, and if it's not falls so kind of anywhere, then you can't pin somebody out of the ring. Okay, but if you're if you have your hand oh, in the rope, go. that means you're outside the ropes too. If your hand, if you're wrapping your fingers around, that means your hands outside the ropes too. Okay. Scoop, no, it scoop. means you're on the ropes. And, and passed. I put my okay. I put my fingers. No, no, if you put your, your hand around it, yeah, exactly. On the point of the rope. Yeah, if you're so putting your, your hand so wrapped, uh, if you're wrapping your hand around the fucking rope, then your fucking fingers are beyond the rope. Yeah. 
No, they're around it. Okay, take it easy. Okay. I, this is this is a dumb ass conversation. <laughs> <laughs> RVD playing heel by saying he'll sell out and loves to work Mondays. I love mm-hmm. this, dude. He was amazing. He was, he, he's so underrated on the mic. I Why know. didn't anyone give him a chance? People hated him for I did fucking some, talking. I did some research on this because mm-hmm. the fans were chanting, you sold out. So apparently the belief was he was going to WCW. Yes. Uh, oops, oops. Probably shouldn't have listened to Melts on that one. <laughs> so he's been wrong for just so many years. So many years of being really bad at this that's 100 percent. and then later that year they did the angle on raw yeah the what? shame dirt cheap busters wasn't around back so then. i listened to kevin sullivan who was talking about ecw at this time and brian pillman more specifically okay so he said that wwe was funding ecw oh, yeah, at this, this time i saw this interview yeah so wwe was funding ecw at this time not wcw yeah, mm-hmm. WCW never funded these. They, no, that's not true. In 1994, they did. And they, that was a different interview. But in 1994, 1995, WCW did. That's really? why you saw guys Well, like, once the whole ended, under, NWA title thing happened, that blew everything up. Yes, yes. Well, I mean, no, because WCW but wasn't with NWA either. So they didn't care. No, they, but they there was still they, a link. They, they sent, no, WCW and, and NWA had broke up in 93-ish, 94-ish, when they threw their shit away. They're like, no, that's done, too. They they separated from them. That was a whole that was a whole thing. It was all about the Crockett's and then selling the property, selling the territory and shit. Um, okay, so yeah, that's about anything else about RVD versus Landstorm. Goat. Goat. Okay, speaking of goat, uh, the great Suzuki, Gran Hamada, and Mas- Masato Hajusiji. Yakusiji. Yakusiji defeated Blue World Green Power Ranger. Yes, I uh, defeated Blue <laughs> World Order Japan. Um, Which is actually Kai and Tai. So this is the first time I ever saw streamers on a pay-per-view, when it was a ton of them. Uh, the Green Power Ranger, as you mentioned, he sure was out in force here. I appreciate the Power Rangers chant. Yeah, so the, fan, the fans knew what was up with that, at I, least. I said it right away, and then they started chanting. I was like, yep, they got I one. I thought thing. it was weird that so many adults, or young adults, knew about Power Rangers. Like, that, like you had to like be so familiar with it chant that well first I off, watch it, every day yeah i know and, and it was a big big thing in that time in the mid i'm aware i was a thing. huge power rangers fan but like my brother wasn't a fan of power rangers no but he knew of it right because you had the toys probably probably okay so here's the deal were they meaning it as a good thing or a bad thing Probably yep. a bad thing. You know for me, I mean? it's a good thing. Yes, for us, we have positive. We're like, yeah, fucking here, I had the Power Rangers, man. I wonder if they had the motorcycle. No, but it's like, it's basically, they're yelling it in a negative way, I'd assume. Like, these are all your older brothers. Because the crowd was very young. It was a, you're like, t- 18 to, to 30 was your demographic for the most part. And Sans, the guys in the front row who looked old. But, like, th- this seemed to be them making fun. Uh, this is a fast-paced match. A lot of action. I enjoyed this. I thought it was fun, but I felt like it went too long. Way too long for a match and no one yeah. cares about. And the best part, this had a one hour time limit. Yeah. Like, all right, buddy, calm down. I was afraid it's we'd not get to going that. in. You don't think we can get an hour out of them? <laughs> oh, I think they 15 minutes of house show. Couldn't get, get 10 hour house show. Oh, couldn't get a good mic either. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm Joey Styles over here, I told you. Yeah, you're worse. <laughs> Um, okay, so anything else about this match, Mike? Here, any comments about the match? Yeah, Gran Hamada. He was like four foot ten and had a Jerry curl, and that he was cool. mean as shit too, dude. He, I'd yeah. be mad too if yeah, I was that he tall. Was. If I was he Mike. also no sold a fucking super atomic drop to the balls from the top rope. He just rolled out of the ring and stood up right after. He did. He's got excuse me, Joey Ryan balls. <laughs> Hashtag strong style. Strong ball style. Um. So it says small ball and strong ball. Dong style. Dong style. Stevie Richards was always underrated. Uh, M. Chai will tell you more. Great match against Jay Lethal. <laughs> yeah, okay, there you go. Uh, before you, you shit on Richards, this was Paulie putting a young guy in the, in the spot of being in the co-main event to test his ability. Paulie was a genius, and, and a lot of people gave him credit for trying to do this. Did it work? Obviously not, but he tried something different. <laughs> Um, whatever. 
Yeah. Go ahead. He's trying I'll to cut add. this really serious promo, and there's this horrible, like, surfer exactly dude music playing in the background. <laughs> and then the blue meanie comes in behind him. Like, it was so bad, and he's trying to be so serious. I'm like, all right, but why is this music okay. playing in the background? Okay, I ignored the music. I listened to Richard's. I thought, I thought it was a, re- I thought it was a really Because his audio was so low. You could yeah. barely even hear him. I know, but it I thought it was like nine minutes long too. I thought the promo, yeah, it was so long. I thought the promo he cut was real. I thought it was a really good promo from him, Richards. But yes, I, I agreed. The music was not that good of a selection. The volume was weird. Not that good of a selection. It's like the worst selection ever. It was the worst selection. <laughs> and um, better but, off with no music. I didn't hate the blue mini coming in as Scott Hall though, with his it was hands so out. Bad. And he's like, so awkward. Like he, he cuts his serious promo. And he had this fucking goof friend of the show friend coming the- in behind him. It's like what the. <laughs> I liked it. I uh, I actually liked the sands the server uh, music and even the server music. I didn't. I hate needed JBL to come in with the clothesline from hell. For who? For Blue Mini. Like yeah, he would have really bust him up. I love Blue Mini. Blue Minis. I just saw the first time Blue Mini ever came into ECW. It was amazing. He <laughs> gave he gave uh, uh, Stevie Richards a half shirt that said "Flock of Seagulls" and he invited him into the ring to be his helper. He was never a fan. And that was that's what. I was never a fan of the Blue Meanie. Oh, it's a, it was a gimmick. It, I, I liked the Blue World Order a lot as a kid. And probably because my introduction to him was him in WWF. Oh, okay. And that's... it's just him, like, with his fat stomach, like, yeah, looking like yeah, a yeah. moron with gold dust. That's like, 2000. Yeah, yeah, that's not the good way to be introduced Video game. to him. Yeah. You had to realize he's a total joke character and then w- whatever. Um, okay. All right, my introduction was the like the video game and him being yeah, like like, like you're such a yeah like you're such a jobber like get the fuck off my TV. Uh, Shane Douglas uh, with Francine defeated Pitbull number two. Um, Shane Douglas was the perfect heel for ECW. He shit talked everybody. He had Francine and he broke Gary Wolf's neck and he had to sit in the front row and watch this. He had a real heat because of the things he did. And in this video package, as you saw. Um, this is when, BG, I told you this before, I, I don't know if you ever saw it, but you saw in this video package, where, uh, Gary Wolf slides in the ring with that giant neck brace thing, and fucking Shane Douglas just starts shaking the shit out of it, like he's trying to re-break the dude's fucking neck and shit, it was hey, fucking crazy. And they, it, they showed in the video package here, it was fucking crazy. But, go ahead. Why was this the longest match in the show? <laughs> not good, not good. I I've never seen the match end on a belly to belly suplex. Like, yeah, I can't he, recall he that. hit him with fucking 50 weapons, yeah. and then he beats him with a belly-to-belly suplex. He was proving a point. Hard-hitting <laughs> matchup, it was not pretty, but it was exactly what you'd expect from Pitbull number two and Shane Douglas. And a this, bad match? I agree. I didn't like the Pitbulls. I, I, no. liked, I liked the Pitbulls. I I Pitbull liked number two is Fat Goldberg. Um, <laughs> is this in lieu of a good wrestler? Well, I, right, honestly, I, right, didn't, I didn't even think the match was horrible. I thought the match was... I thought it went too long, but I didn't think it was horrible. I thought it was Pretty a grudge bad. match. Dude, he broke the dude's fucking neck, and he's fighting the dude's brother, in air quotes. So yeah, it's going to be Shane, a beat-the-shit-out-of-each-other kind of match. But Shane is really your, like, what, second top, third top heel in the company? Yeah. At this I, point? Yeah. Like, he should... I don't know, he should kind of plow through fucking Pitbull number two. He's not even the number one. He's not even the number one Pitbull. Well, that, that I, I know why they call him Pitbull number two. Oh, I see. Okay, here's the thing. I would sit here and scream at you guys, but when I was doing research for this, I, know. I found out what happened to Pitbull number two. No, which, don't say it. I have say to. It. This is the fucking truth. This is what happened. I looked up the news report and everything. Uh, BG, do you know what happened to Pitbull number two? Like in real life? Mm-hmm. No, I'm, I feel like I'm about to feel real bad about myself. Though. Yeah, he, yeah pa- I, he passed away. I'm not going to feel bad. I still call. I called him poop, but yeah. no, you know, he, I got to here's, here's the thing. He passed away. He overdosed on drugs. He and his wife at the oh. same time overdosed on drugs. Here is the kicker. They had two very small children, months old, who were left for days by themselves while the dead bodies sat there in the house. That's horrible, and I blame him for it. Yeah. That's yeah. why I'm not defending him. Um, some chance that we heard during this match mm-hmm. towards Let's Francine. To that. She's got herpes. Yep. She's a whore. Yep. Uh, wow. Chance are mean in Philly, is what I wrote. Classless. Chance and, and Joey mean. Styles called Francine a shameless hussy. Yes. So and, jo- and Joey a, Madden. And a bimbo, too. Hmm? Yeah, why yeah. don't you get on him for that? Uh, because that was part of the storyline, and she came out no. with her ass hanging out. So it was. So, for bit. your entertainment. She did it for you. No, she did not do it for me. She did it to get heat. Mm-mm, I think she did it for you. To get heat? No way. Oh, she did get heat. She was a heat magnet. She got dude. the blood pumping. Well, not mm-hmm. to your head. Uh, well, to one head. Uh, the match was longer than should have been, uh, but 
Whatever. D- uh, Douglas carried Pitbull for like 20 uh, minutes. The Undertaker coming out at the end. Do you like that? Yeah, yeah <laughs> Fake Baker. Baker. <sighs> why, uh, oh, oh, wait, why minute, was wait, Shane wait, Douglas... Wait a minute, wait a minute. Primetime Brian Lee came out? Yeah. Yeah. You remember this? Did I write? I didn't write that down. No. He dressed up like Rick Rude. And and something Bennett or whatever. We haven't gotten there yet. Okay. You know what this match needed? Chris Candido is what I wrote. Um, but it's all <laughs> saved when it's all saved at the end when Rick Rude swerves the franchise. I thought this moment was so fucking cool as a kid. Yes, it was. That was prime time Brian Lee, uh, totally swerving him and kissing Francine and. Uh, Francine wanted the rude awakening to her butt, is what I wrote here. Yikes. Wow. It you it, you really are from Philly, clearly. Listen, it ain't wrong, though, dude. Fucking Rick Rude was a fucking ladies' man and a half, dude. And he was awesome. So, so you want you wanted Rick Rude? What, Rude, mm-hmm. rude awakening? I mean, I wouldn't probably wouldn't turn him down. Wouldn't throw, <laughs> him, out of, wouldn't throw him out of bed, you know what I mean? Come on, man. <laughs> fucking Rick fucking Rude, dude. I like it. Yikes. Can I, I, I just have one question about this match, though. Sure. Why was Shane Douglas hiding the brass knuckles? I don't. You can do whatever you want. Yeah, don't don't try it with logic here. It's okay. ECW. Do whatever the it's hell gotta you want. Gotta be a heel, man. Gotta be. A heel. Exactly. He's still managing to get heel heat because you know what the heel heat was from? Hiding the weapon. Fans <laughs> wanted to see the whole fucking time. He's like, no, no, no. I'm hiding that. Sh-. Putting it into his trunks was the heel heat. Taking it out was not. Um, okay, so that was that was the match. I th- I thought the Rick Root stuff was cool at the end. I really did. Uh, Raven promo. Amazing. And I said, this is how Elias Sampson should have been booked. Just in song uh, form. He, he just sucks. He There's shouldn't only, be booked, though. Just yeah. in song Raven form. was amazing. And also, underrated is his work in early TNA when he first came in. I 100% agree with that, but I'd like to say in with this, that everyone talks about his character and his promos and stuff like that. He's underrated in ring. He's a of good worker. He's, he's always worker. underrated. Yeah, he's a good worker. Who really even let worker. him back into the fucking company? I don't know. Who, Raven? That's what Vince said. Oh, yeah. They're like, Johnny Polo. What is Johnny, Johnny Polo, Polo doing, here? doing here? Freaking guy. <laughs> That's one of my favorite stories. <laughs> By the way, Raven and Taz both cut really good promos. Yeah. Fucking Bill Alfonso tried to ruin Taz's promo. Oh, yeah, we'll talk about is the worst. Let's do, let's do this right here. The worst. Taz cuts an amazing promo as well. Amazing promo. He felt 10 feet fucking tall in this fucking promo. Because they let him talk, they kept zoomed in on him, and then in the side you see a possibly under the influence Bill Alfonso, <laughs> like, just dead staring with... He really does look like he's just cracked out. Well, Horrible. first things first, I don't know, I can't say what he was on, but I know for a fact that I did see him one day with the Sandman drinking hundreds of beers. <laughs> and I say hundreds, not like um, Mike McCall says Paul. hundreds, but like literally they had hundreds, at least 120 beers. <laughs> and probably more. So I absolutely believe that he was drunk here. Maybe. Allegedly. Um, so let's talk about Taz against... Uh, anything about the promo? No. Ah, really good. We said the same thing when he cut the uh, promo on Bam Bam. He is a good promo. He was a good promo. Mm-hmm. He's great. When he gets to WWF... So underused in WWF. Ugh, remember when they just... Criminally underused. The Royal, Royal Rumble like it was nothing? Mm-hmm. Check cleared. Check cleared. Check cleared. Taz... <laughs> okay, we got Taz against Sabu. This Taz, is one of my favorite ECW matches of all time. I love this match. Taz is like, yeah, we got to spice this up. I'm just going to break your fucking nose to start the match. Is that cool? <laughs> got to really said, drive home the intensity and hatred. And I said, how's that for strong style? He fucking, he's like, I'm just going to break your face. Like, like three yeah. minutes into the match. Mm-hmm. Uh, poor camera guy. He can't, none of, no camera guy, they keep cutting to different camera shots and no one can find them. They're just in the crowd, <laughs> fighting through the stands, camera guys can't handle it. Kevin Dunn is in fucking Stanford losing his shit at this time. He's like, what the fuck are they doing? This is crazy. Um, Sabu gets shit for being a spot monkey, but I loved Sabu. He was oh, yeah. perfect for this crowd and this atmosphere and he was such a huge part of ECW success. Well, he did fuck up, yes. He fucked a up a but lot. He fucked up in like, this match itself, actually. But that uh, was the appeal of Sabu. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, you're waiting. I haven't waited for him to hit the move. You're waiting to see him fuck up. It was the tr- Well, it was both. It was, is he going to fuck the other guy up or fuck himself up? Well, right. after the match when he tried to do that table spot with RVD, 
he messed up twice on the same spot. Yeah, yeah. but that's why, like, the gimmick, like, the suicidal, homicidal, genocidal, like, it works, because, yeah. like, Cause he he's really gonna did. kill himself. Yeah, exactly. I, lo- I love Sabu. I always they had, love Sabu. Isn't it today, uh, whenever we're filming this, that they had, like, an arc on <laughs> WWE.com? <laughs> yeah. Why like, he... Like, John Cena, like, gave him a lot of props and shit. The article was called, like, Sabu, why he created hardcore wrestling, and everybody forgot about it, or something like that. It's like, okay. <laughs> I mean, it's not wrong. Um, I we forgot about it. Although, I mean, I Terry, wouldn't know Terry, how to find it on www.com. Yeah, no, I can't even go it. on that site. Although so. uh, Terry Funk would argue that he kind of was a big part of hardcore wrestling. You know, you know what I hated about this match? What? And really, I any Taz match only because of Joey Styles. Kata Hajime! Oh my god. <laughs> that, okay, first things first. It's a if fucking you ever... Taz mission. It's a Taz mission. Okay, see, here's how I know you've never done any research in your life because it's fucking Taz who is adamant about what the things are called. I don't care. It's a Taz mission. I know, he's Jujikatami, Mulligatani. Yeah, he, he's Taz adamant. Mission. No, 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 you can say Joey Styles at one, but I'm sure Joey Styles was told, like, you fucking call it this, and he called it that because Taz is a little mean man, so... No, Taz mission. Okay, <laughs> deny reality. Whatever the hell you want to do, I don't care. Delusional. Should have been a Taz mission. what should have been called. Hey, hey, you, know, you, you know what, Donnie? Where? Go ahead. Fuck Bill Alfonso. Except oh, yeah. for when he puts over Sabu after Taz suplexes him into the crowd. That was yeah, good. that was so weird. Okay, his he's <laughs> Joey Styles goes. Alfonso is shouting advice to Taz. The <laughs> advice was he Sabu. Yeah, he Sabu. <laughs> he's Sabu. But he's I love it. Advice. He's like, yo, you have to go get it, Sabu, because he's gonna keep coming back. Like yeah. that was good stuff. This this was a really good fucking match. I, oh, I don't. I, I, listen, it's not gonna be pretty. You're never gonna go to ECW yeah. and be like, um, okay, take that back. Jerry Lynn, RVD, they were pretty matches. They were brutal. They were stiff as shit, but they were pretty matches. But for the most part, your 98% of your matches in ECW are going to be fucking brutal. I just watched the Rotten Brothers in a fucking Taipei death match. It's going to be brutal, okay? Um, yeah, Boo probably yeah. got 10 concussions in this match. Yeah, from I've seen this match. <laughs> yeah, he, I've seen this match so many times. Yeah. I love this match. And Taz was the perfect embodiment of what Paul E. could do. He was a small guy... But how he was booked made him feel like one of the most unstoppable forces in wrestling. Matanza. He yeah he that's a, that's what we say we kind of laugh at but he was left in the corner with his arms crossed and he wouldn't bat an eye survive yeah. if I let you what was the what did he say win if you can survive survive if I let you I think it probably isn't right it's, I don't think it's right <laughs> it but does it, not sound correct it doesn't sound correct but he would always drive that home and it was it was the survival part because you felt like man he could choke you out and fuck you up because he would just do that he fucking just sh- fucking destroyed people I love Sabu mocking Taz by crossing his arms and shit and yeah. then he just gets owned and that's the finish mm-hmm. and that's a good finish I really like that Taz fucking Sabu took all Taz could give him he mocked him and then Taz's like alright playtime's over and just fucking yeah. just starts <laughs> dropping him on his neck <laughs> <laughs> Kajamaya made him right in his head, mm-hmm. and fucking, Hajime! and then fucking great Dragon Ball Z. Yeah, great, great finish. I loved it. Um, Beat me if you can survive. I let you. There you go. Um, yeah. I was close enough. Win if you can survive. I let you. Yeah. Uh, Sabu lost the match. So how did Fonzie's turn help anything? Like, why wouldn't he have turned <laughs> during the match? That's my That's question. I said. And then after the match, Alfonso said that Taz cost him a lot of money because Be- because he had all his money on him. No, he had all his money on Sabu. He said. You cost no, me a lot of money. No, he said you cost me a lot of money tonight, man. I had my money on Sabu. He didn't say Sabu at all. No, doesn't make sense, regardless. Okay, no. I, I think I think <laughs> if he, he had his money check. on Sabu, then why wouldn't he have had RVD he himself go screw over Taz? Okay, okay. That was some okay. Money on that did not work. I agree. That's what I said. Uh, but I, Taz I, owns some fucking mark ass loser. Well, yes. Okay, match. that's true. So basically, he's before the, oh, the oh, Bill Alfonso. Yeah. No, before the turn. No. Yeah, that too. He does on him. Uh, and he's especially later on too. But before the turn, Taz is talking to Sabu, saying how much he respects him and all this stuff. And some fans are like, this is pussy stuff or whatever. And, and he's like, shut your bitch mouth up before I beat your ass. <laughs> and the best part is the dude who talks shit had a sign that said, Taz fears me. And he oh, put shit. it and he put it down when he fucking, <laughs> so maybe you fear Taz, one of those things. Um, but yeah, so F- Fonzie turns. I like the turn kind of at the as far as like the visual of him standing with RVD and taking the shirt off and stuff like that. I just wish he had like you know screwed over Taz or something to get to that point. But I always like the visual of him taking the shirt off and revealing his Sabu shirt. And yeah. then RVD comes in, steals my heart even more, 
And yeah. he's like, Steals all the thunders. And he's like, hey, guys. He's like, listen, I love working Mondays. Shoot me a call. Shoot my agent a call. Fonzie, all right? It's like <laughs> he, was so- working, he was working Davey M so much. Oh, yeah. he was, dude. And the R- crowd was so – that's such – he had such R- heat for man. saying shit like that, dude. ECW GOAT. Listen, he was one of the best heels in the company. And when mm. he turned face, he fucking was one of the – he was the best face in the company. So yeah. fucking guy was amazing in two different aspects. Fucking whatever. Did he even win the title? The world title there? Yeah. I know that he for held, forever. I, I know. Yeah, he held the television title for like, like 700 weeks years. or something like that. It was something ridiculous. For 700 days, 700 weeks. Was he Pink Then he Floyd? got injured. Yeah, so 700 was, weeks. That is a long reign. Oh, the, hey, Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon was on the charts for 700 weeks or something crazy like that. So it's a real thing. But yeah, not in wrestling. But yeah, he broke his leg or something. That's why he tore up his knee, mm-hmm. maybe. And that's why he had to surrender. That, and he had to surrender it. He fucking didn't even get a chance to fucking really lose it. So imagine how long it would have been. <laughs> uh, no, he never won it before. Yeah, he won it in he WWE. To, yeah. Yeah. Paulie. Well, Vince Paul, had to correct that. Well, Paul, no, Paul E. just gave him a title. He's like, this will be yours as long as you're here. You just have this one. <laughs> and he did. He just had it forever. Yeah, uh, he didn't need the world. He honestly didn't need the world title. So. I got it. I agree. If if we were doing, like, reviews every week on ECW, we would be complaining. He got Enzo and cast, basically. Yeah. Except if they didn't even win a fucking title. Yeah. <laughs> they got no title. <sighs> okay, so we go on to, is there anything before the uh, triple threat match? Yeah. Uh, Eula shows up. Okay, that's Billy part of this. chant, show your tits. Yeah, that's a thing. Yep, and she's like a face. And she's a face, and Tommy Dreamer is right next to her, and he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah let's do it. Let's do this thing. <laughs> Can we do this? And then... This is ridiculous. Hey, dude, it was a different time. I'm not going to defend what wasn't this there. This is the reason why the women's revolution took so long. Philadelphia. That's it. Yeah, right. It was... Uh, like, okay. That, it was Philadelphia, right? Yep. Not, like, mm-hmm. the whole world? Okay. No, it was Philadelphia. Fucking delusional. Um, fans can't, I, I heard in Buffalo they were still dragging their women around by their hair until the 80s. Uh, fans care about the, fans care about Beulah much more than they care about Tommy Dreamer. At least when they come out, for sure. Nothing? Well, no. Because Tommy Dreamer does not do a good job on commentary. He was awful on commentary. (laughs) My favorite part of him on commentary was like, Joey, I just gotta be silent for a while. (laughs) Yeah, that was the best. (laughs) Thank God. Uh, BWO gimmick. I always love the BWO gimmick. I loved. I like Stevie Richards. I really did. Um, Should not have been in this. Well, he's okay. so out of place in this. <laughs> I disagree. I, I, I thought he was pretty good, Stevie Richards, in this. He, Stevie Richards was I awesome Stevie in this Richards. match. It's just like, like the rest of the BWO could have went away. I agree with that. Just... That was my. That was my point here. Their BWO gimmick is funny as shit, but this was not a comedy segment. Okay, this was a uh, this was a serious segment. I thought Stevie Richards fit, and again, this goes back to Paulie putting Stevie Richards in this in this moment to see what he could do. You have Terry Funk, and you're going to complain about Terry Funk, and I'm going to roll you for that. But that's something totally different. The Sandman, hey. of course, he was former world champion. Yeah, you're going to shit on Terry Funk going over, right? Later, not okay, but <laughs> but it, over Raven, but it, it made a ton of sense in that time, and still does. No, doesn't. We'll see. Uh, so Sandman, of course, Steve Richards. I felt like you're throwing in a guy to try him out, and I felt like it worked. And he was he he, he lived up to the hype, and he was I thought he was great in this match. I really enjoyed him. Um, Sandman entrance time, and on yeah, let's talk about his entrance song. Come on in, Sand Guy. It's my favorite song. <sighs> so that's a <laughs> WWE Network for you. They're going to do it all, every time, yeah, every single, and that's one thing we didn't mention. If you go to watch an ECW. Uh, Anything, hardcore TV, a pay-per-view, anything like that on the WWE Network, be prepared to not hear any original themes. I know, that's such a shame. Because everything was stolen. Um, or borrowed. You can't even hear Voodoo Child for Hogan and WCW. Yep. Either. Mm. <sighs> Whatever. Uh, <laughs> it's, I'm going to yell, but I won't. Sandman busts himself open hard way with a can. The Sand- huge. The, so the huge, yeah. yes. Sandman is all entrance and hardcore spots, and I loved him. Of course, it's fucking amazing. Yeah, it was just it was, and I'm watching a lot. Like I said, I'm going through '94, '95 on Hardcore TV when he was the world champion, and with woman and shit like that, and how he'd come down just drinking all these beers, and she just light the lighter for him and shit like that. It was just such a good, it was such a good gimmick, and fans loved him. Zubaz of the pants, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> fucking. All he thought it was '92 still. 
Oh, so bad. Oh, he, he knew damn well. Well, actually, he might not, not have known what day it was. <laughs> uh, the replacement song is atrocious for all of this. Terry Funk's <laughs> song sounds like yeah. elevator yeah, country music. <laughs> it's like Terry Funk, the hardcore motherfucker from Amarillo, Texas. Boop, boop, ba da boop, 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 ba ba da boop. Fucking his grizzled ass fucking veteran, fucking of so many wars in wrestling. Boop, boop, ba da ba da ba boop, boop. It's like, fuck you, dude. Um, this He's match was... To a false sense of security is what he was doing. He did. Clearly. <laughs> this match was what we thought it would be. Hardcore spots out the ass. Tons of stuff. Lots of blood. Exactly what we thought it would be. Mm-hmm. Uh, Funker with the ladder. Airplane spin. Smashing into people. Uh, and then he leaves to go have another three-way dance with the ladder and the ropes. Yeah, well, it wasn't <laughs> always easy for Funker. How, uh, how about Sandman's move with the freaking ladder, though, where we split, he jumped off the top rope to oh, hit yeah. the ladder, so it <laughs> slingshot and hit Richards in the face. It totally missed, and then it went, like, hurling at Sandman. And it was so dumb. The end of the fucking face. All he did was <laughs> slap the ladder. Like, he ran jumped all the way over the top rope. Why? Like, why did you do that? <laughs> I'll tell you why. Because he changed his mind mid-jump. <laughs> Because he's a drunk, dude. He was so I don't want drunk. It. Like, the, if he just went to the fucking ring apron and jumped off, it would have been a lot more The effective. best was Joey Styles. He's like, if you think Sandman's just a drunk, well, you're right. He's probably had about 30 beers by now. And it was just like, that was all. I was like, okay, at least we're honest here. Some refreshing honesty. And yet he still has amazing aim because if he comes back with that oh. trash can wrapped in steel, he hits <laughs> Funk right on the top of right head. Dude, he hits him from the aisle. Not even like ringside. He's coming back from the aisle. He throws it from a good 20 feet away. The thing goes sailing into the ring and fucking like the corner of it hits Funk in the head and you can tell it hurt. That and definitely Funk's hurt. Like, what the, the fuck, fuck, And dude? Funk like no sells it too. He's like, what the f-? Yeah, like what the fuck? Yeah. And then, um... <laughs> Just in amazement that he was able to hit him. Yeah, he's like, great aim. <laughs> um, so he, they pull out barbed wire. Uh, Funker starts whipping Sandman with barbed wire. Then <laughs> Sandman grabs that, the barbed this wire. This was not wraps- a great visual. What? He, this was not a great visual. He wrapped himself in barbed wire and then like hugged him like he was the Yeti. <laughs> okay, first things first. He always yeah, but it's would, real barbed wire. Yeah, and he did that yeah. shit all the time. No. He would he would wrap himself like this goes back to his start. I saw a match against him and uh, Mick, uh, Cactus Jack at the time, and he fucking was doing stinger splashes yeah, with barbed wire fucking wrapped that around him, dude. That's a good him, plan. Yeah, no, it wasn't, because <laughs> the, later in the match, fucking uh, uh, Cactus Jack takes off uh, Sandman's shirt, and his whole fucking chest is covered in blood from fucking getting stabbed with the shit. It's crazy. Uh, Funk it's hits insane. the... Funk! So, Stevie Richards gets eliminated first. I thought Stevie Richards had a really good match. I thought he performed really well. And I do... I, I thought he fit. I can't remember a single thing that he did in this match. Really? Oh, I he swear did to God, kick. I don't, re- I don't did, remember well, He did super kicks! He did a bunch of hardcore spots. He fucking was... Uh, him and Funker teamed up for a little while on Sandman. And then they teamed up on him. So, I, I thought he was good. I liked him. I didn't have any problem with him in this match. You did? I just don't remember a single thing that he did. Oh. Well, fun- I, I, I thought they needed like a, a really good heel here. Well, uh, fun- he is a really good heel. Funk hits the fucking moonsault. Really? Because people were cheering him. So. They needed right to censor Stevie Richards. White socks. No, no, all. no one needs that. <laughs> Funk hits the fucking moonsault on Sandman for the win because, of course, he did. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, but so this match was brutal. Any comments about just the, is it, if you have never seen these two matches and leading into the Raven match? This whole, because I count this as like one, it's two separate matches, but it's one segment. Um, and this was the first ever kind of main event for their shit. So this was, if you get a chance, watch all of this. It's worth it. Uh, this was a brutal match. Any thoughts on the first match before we go to second? No, I've seen this match a few times. Mm-hmm. So, a um, couple things before we get to the second match. Funk, you notice when he's rolling around in the ring, he's got a huge gouge on the side of his fucking uh, belly. Like, from under his nipple to, like, the mid of his back, it is a bar. You could tell a piece of barbed wire went all the way around and just ripped a hole in him. And it's huge, and it's deep as shit, and it's bleeding everywhere. So you thought, you know, blood was going to be... That was the end of the blood? No. Fucking, uh... Raven comes into the ring now. It's their championship match. Funker gets hit in the head, and he blades for our sins. And this bitch gets so deep, he damn near hit his brain. He is gushing blood. At one point, he's sitting up and looking over at the camera, and you can see the blood going onto his chest, and it looks like someone above him pouring red liquid on him. It's gross. He is bloody as shit. 
you know it's bad if a fucking doctor shows up in ECW. Well, yeah. th- I <laughs> firmly believe that that happened for a reason because threatening to stop the fight cuz blood made the crowd so unbelievably mad that they like couldn't handle themselves. <laughs> Imagine like, them at NXT takeover for Dallas. Oh my god. Well, <laughs> nine, you, okay, we just time machine like the new DeLorean. Time <laughs> machine the 97 ECW fans to then they're like, "What the fuck? <laughs> what?" <laughs> Um, but no, because you, you gotta figure, these are the same fans that, like I said, I saw the Rotten vs. Rotten Taipei Deathmatch, which was bloody as fuck. So, and then they're like, people are gonna stop this? No. No, 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 no. Um, so fans, that was, that was a good heat generator, that was perfect. Um, this was the part where Dreamer <laughs> S. Styles did do him a favor and leave him alone. Yes. This, 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 right. I'm going to start saying that to you on the show. Can you do me a favor? Well, do you, me a favor and yeah, leave go me ahead. alone. Yeah, I will. Ten, I will. Ten seconds. And then you stop talking. That's f- perfect for me. Um, yeah. So the, the match itself is exactly what you'd think. A fresh raven comes in and starts beating the fuck out of a 50-some-year-old funk. I did not do the exact math, but he was in his 50s for sure. Yeah, um, he said 53. 53. 53. And uh, do you, you, you want to do your complaint here, BG? Why well, is there? I don't have a complaint here yet, but at one point, Raven dives over the top rope through Funk on the table, which definitely hurt because Raven comes down. It looks like he hits his head on the ladder that he forgot to move. <laughs> like, that that definitely hurts. Yeah. There's a lot of things in ECW where you're like, there's no, you hurt yourself. There. Yeah. You... And, and the craziest part is, most of the time, they no-sell it. Like yeah, he, brutal, well, brutal things. Where yeah, yeah, it's what I'm, yeah, yeah. So most times, even like I fucking have, themselves up, they they just no sell because they're like, no, I'm tougher than that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I have two problems, and they're not related to Terry Funk at all. Okay, go ahead. Reggie Bennett, that'd be one of them. Yeah. How about that power bomb? That was the worst. Okay, power hold bomb on a minute. Seen. How about Tommy Drew's choke slam? <laughs> okay, that's yes! what I was say. Big... <laughs> how about how Big Dick Dudley had to just jump through it himself? Yeah, essentially. yeah, that was terrible. <laughs> Big Dick Dudley took the worst choke slam in history. Sorry, Hogan and Undertaker. Just watch <laughs> this. So basically, Tommy Dreamer gets him up, lifts him up, they land, and then <laughs> Big Dick Dudley falls. He's like, "Oh shit!" Okay, I'll fall, and then he goes down. <laughs> so that was horrible. Do you think that maybe? Just maybe, <laughs> Raven wasn't supposed to kick the fuck out there. Dude, when they I wrote up? this exact same thing. Really? Raven and Funk covered, but then Raven kicked out, and the bell rang anyway. Yeah. And then Funk actually pinned him with a small package. Yeah. Unreal. <sighs> she could have, should have counted through. Yeah, uh, but whatever. Uh, yeah. Uh, fucking not, dumb, not, man. <laughs> Like, yeah, that was one of my points. Like, what the like? Why did you kick out of the DVD, the DDT, only to get rolled up like five seconds later? That made no sense. Then <laughs> Funk, like, this pisses me off because Funk goes nearly twenty minutes in a hardcore match, a brutal match, like we just said, that three way dance. Then beats Raven in just over seven minutes. Like, why are you putting over this young upstart Terry Funk? Build up Raven. Okay, that's stupid. No, okay. You would be, like we'd a- be all yeah. sitting on this booking if this happened. Here's the deal. Let me explain. You especially, because okay. you hate hey, well, you, Do you want to hear the are... fucking explanation, the truth of the situation? <laughs> Don't forget, I Raven. The truth. It's Raven. Terry Funk, hard. Ra- like... Raven was one of the top stars for the two years previous to this and two years following this. So he was billed as a top star, just not at this event. Terry Funk was brought into this pay per view especially because Paul E said, I have to have something big. I need a big name for my first ever pay-per-view. So he, he put Funk over in the main event to get his fucking company some credibility. Well, you know what? You can say, no, well, that doesn't make sense. Raven never won a title again. It did. No, but he was booked. He was, he won titles. He didn't win the title, but he won titles. Okay. Okay. And he was booked, so in, major sto- he was booked in major storylines and shit. So he, he got did dropped stuff. down. So he got dropped down. He did fucking all- some of the most way. memorable storylines you ever remember from ECW. The stuff with Sandman and stuff like that. that it was all stuff. That's had how it all happened. He didn't need the champion. He didn't need the championship. As I mean, a matter of fact, that before- I'm pretty sure that was before this. Uh, I would check. I think it was 97. With what? Him and Sandman? Yeah. yeah. And Sandman. It was before this because they even talked about it. Okay, then what, what And I'm looking at the title history. They exchanged a title in ninety six, the two of them. What was the Tommy Dreamer title? Well, or the Tommy Dreamer Raven feud. That that continued after this with like the chair shirt chair shot heard around the world and shit. That was after this. Oh, no, right? they showed that in the video package. My timelines are all fucked up. But yeah, Terry Funk came in to fucking give the company credibility and fucking put over the fucking he's a he was a living legend. How about he put everybody... over someone who's supposed to be a, new, a fucking rising I, star. I liked How it. I liked it. I liked Terry Funk winning. It was a lifetime title. achievement award, essentially. 
Because he did help kind of build up ECW, and I feel like it was a situation where Heyman felt he owed him something. And plus, he wanted, like, a feel-good story to end the pay-per-view. Yes, exactly. And Uh, he wanted the notoriety of having Terry Funk, people who know Terry Funk, everyone, former NWA world champion, winning the championship at your first ever pay-per-view. It it made headlines. People talked about that. It was good. It was a nice moment. I don't know. It probably was the best for long term. Okay, you can say, no, no, and it... Honestly, it didn't really hurt them at all. They fucking there was plenty of stuff that came after that that hurt them. Like I said, the company was not the problem was not the booking and the wrestling. It was the fucking fiscal stuff behind the scenes that eventually killed them. Yes, I'm aware. So it's not. Don't act like this but is the, the I'm not, huge, right, but a huge. But don't deal. say that everything he, that Paul Heyman did was good booking because it's not. Oh, That's I, not I just booking. literally complained about the ending of this match, but I believe Terry Funk winning was the good booking. It was the right okay. the kick out at the, the end. The way was they did it wasn't like good. That. He owes a twenty minute match, then Raven, fresh as fuck, beats down fucking Terry Funk the whole match. Don't don't That's underestimate it. the influence of fucking. Tommy Why isn't Tommy Dreamer? Dreamer... He was. He was there. Why isn't Tommy Dreamer? Dreamer? Why does he come down and beat up Raven? Yeah, and, he did, and kind he of. Did, he for did like come down and beat him, and that's how Funk won the match, kind of. Even though he, though he went against what he said he was going to do. I know he so. did. Uh, he said the whole time, "I'm not going to help up. him." Then he went and helped him, and it literally helped him win the title. But, do uh, me a favor and leave me alone. I'm not going to go help him. Then uh, Funk and Dreamer go and bleed all over the audience. I was just saying, that's not smart. <laughs> bloody ass Funker walking through the crowd was awesome because you see people, people. I saw the dude grab his white T-shirt and help Funk by wiping his face off with his own white T-shirt. I bet that guy still has a T-shirt. I bet you he does. Too. It's like on the, his wall in a mantle. I bet you it's like the guy whose car I saw everybody fuck up that one time yeah. in front of ECW Arena, and that guy's just got that at home. Like, yeah, it's the car out back. Yeah, I'm not gonna get rid of it. It's a fucking, it's a piece of history. Frames the door. <laughs> no, it was a fender, <laughs> mostly a fender, and then the hood, then into the door. So it's a lot of the cars. They just say the whole car. Um, Saws half the car. So, so uh, it's. Uh, Do you ever see the guy who got divorced and she got half his stuff? So he literally. Yes. Like, Did I send that to you? I sent that to you. Uh, you may have, but it was it was hilarious. He sold his car in half, his laptop, his couches, everything, <laughs> everything, everything in half. Everything in half. Yep. And he's like, "There you go, there bitch. You go. get half." Um, I had a ton. Really of, a bad plan. I had a ton of fun watching this show. Uh, the production was terrible. But that added to the underground feeling that made it fun. When I was a kid watching this and you watched WCW and you watched Raw, you felt like this was like you almost taboo in the yeah, sense. Yeah, you felt like, like you weren't supposed to watch yes, it. Yes, that's I exactly. Loved it. And it was it was it felt like this is what and it was the stuff that you kinda wanted. Because as a kid my uncle listened to Howard Stern. So it was really raunchy. And I remember listening to Howard Stern and my uncle had um body count. You remember body count, PG? It was Ice T, and it was his rock and roll band. They did Cop Killer. That song, the song yes, Cop Killer. Okay, yes, yes, so yes. I remember that he got that cassette when it first came out. So I was used to this hardcore stuff and hearing all this stuff, and then. But then you watch TV, and that's not anywhere on TV. And then you watch ECW, and it's everywhere on ECW. And fucking New Jack's coming out. Boom, boom. The whole match and shit. It was fucking awesome. It was so anti what was happening in the real world at the time. And it was it was such a cult phenomena. And then, like I said, it, it led to the changes that we saw everywhere else, too. Because it, it, yeah. it, it showed you could do it and, and, and draw people in. So, I, I love this. Yeah, it's a great paper, yeah. I gave it an 8 out of 10 because, I, again, there were things that definitely went into it not being as good as it could have been. Production and, and long matches and too short of matches. So, there were some difficulties. But again, this was their first ever pay-per-view. And I, I thought it I thought it was good. I really enjoyed it. Mike what would you give it? Uh, I'd give it a 6.5. It, it was fun. Like, every ECW pay-per-view, it's always fun because all kinds of crazy stuff is going on. But really, like, if you look up and down the card, most of the matches weren't really that good at all. Uh, besides, like, Taz Sabu, there, there was entertaining stuff for sure, but the match quality wasn't that great. So, 6.5. BG, what would you give it? I gave it a 7 out of 10. And it's mostly, honestly, because of um, the last three matches. Yeah, and I, like I said, and it, RVD's fun, and and the fun, and I think the I, I liked and listen, yes, was the the crowd offensive? Sure, but in that time, in oh, that I space, don't have a real problem with that. Watch it, yeah, but watching this I have back, so much problem with that. But watching back, <laughs> I like. I think that we always talk about atmosphere, and with NXT, how it can make a great match even better. Yeah. And like this ECW arena was ripe for that kind of stuff. So I, I really enjoy even this, even the worst matches. The crowd made me like at least have fun while while those matches were going on. So and like, growing up is why I love getting like the compilation DVDs because it had like Taz Sabu and um, 
the three way dance, which I, and I believe they also showed Funk and Raven, or at least I watched them immediately afterwards. So it's like you saw the best of Barely Legal '97 because the rest isn't that good. Well, t- like I said, this was a time during tape trading, and my uncle was adamant about seeing every ECW show. So when we wouldn't go to one, he'd get the tape for the show we didn't go to. Yeah. And, like, it was every week. And then once T- – and then, like, I say – before this, it came on television locally in Philadelphia – and once that happened, we were taping that. And then he started, like, sending them out. He would tape it, and then we had two we had two VHS players. Yeah. Right? We were badass. And you could tape from one to the other. Yep, so, and then he too. would tape trade. He would fucking, like, send them out to people and shit. It was, it was a fucking... It was a really cool time in wrestling. And I feel like... Like, my kid come, being born soon will never know of, like... He'll never know... She'll never know of CDs... She'll never know, really, of VHS tapes and all these kind of... You know what I mean? All these... She'll never know the struggle. So never know Does the she struggling. know of wrestling? She will know of wrestling, yes. <laughs> I have to oh, tell her about it. She's, she's going to fucking learn about it sooner or later. She's like, Dad, why are you always watching this? She's going to have a hat wrestling? with a fucking ponytail. She, yeah, she oh, will. God. No, no way. She will, as soon as she can comprehend things, she's going to be like, that's dumb. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, you're right. Okay, so that was Ring Rust Radio, ECW, barely legal in 1997. I always love doing Ring Rust Retros, and I always love doing ECW shows. It's always enjoyable. Uh, BG, if I'm a fan, how can I get my retro done? Patreon.com slash Ring Rust Radio. Go to the Ring Rust Retro tier. Donate to the show. Email us the show that you want us to cover. As long as it's available legally for us to watch it online, we will watch it and then review it. And uh, you know what? I'm gonna put my foot down. Please don't do WrestleMania because they're like four hours. Just give us like a normal. You can do paper. old WrestleMania that's not four hours. Okay. Just yeah. it has to be like three hours. Three two thousand. Yeah. Um, three or less. Three or less. Well, this was was this three or more? I, I don't no. even know. I didn't. No, this is two hours and forty minutes. Okay, three hours or less is what I'm gonna stick with. That's fine. Uh, and BG, uh, so the fans who like to get ahead, uh, what's the next retro we have coming up? Survivor Series 2002. Uh, at least none of us went to that. I did. Oh, wait. Oh, man. Oh, shit. Okay, I'm excited for that. That's going to be fun. All right, you know, guys, that was Ring Runs Retro. Big thanks uh, to all the people who contribute to, for Retro. It's a fantastic. But, you know, guys, we have to move on. <laughs> 